In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to go about modeling this example in format. So I've got some example drawings that we're going to use to model this cabin. So there's a floor plan with the scale bar and a north point. Then I've got some reference images that we'll use as well to assist us in finalizing the model. Okay, this is going to be an interpretation. It's not going to be exactly the same. So we'll see how we fill in the little gaps as we go forward. Okay, but in essence, we've got some reference images, okay, which we're going to use to model our, our building. Okay, now in format, the first thing that you need to make sure is that you're working to the correct units. So you'll need to go to settings, click on units, make sure it's metric millimeters, okay. Then make sure that you've got all of these icons available. If you go to window, just make sure that you can, you can switch on your layers, levels, scenes, visual styles. Okay, so you're going to switch on all of this information. You can open up the model tree as well. That's quite important if you want to select certain objects. So, but it's not necessary that you have it on all the time. Okay, model tree. Okay, plugin manager. Okay, I've got some additional things which you probably won't have, but that's fine. You don't need those tools for this example. Okay. Now, typically when you start trying to model a building, there's two options to bring in an image. If you simply go to import and you import an image to use as a, as a reference image. You'll notice that when these images come in, they are locked to the origin of the file. You can move them. You can move them around and you can scale them. But that's all that you can do. Okay. So you can't use these images, you can't use this image vertically, you can't rotate this image. So as it comes in, so if you used an aerial photograph, this is probably a typical workflow and you see it already gives you a layer on which to work and you can switch it on and off. Okay, however, for what we need to do, this is not going to work too well. So what I recommend do, you doing is delete this image and we're going to create, we're going to use another technique to do this. In SketchUp it works slightly differently. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to create a face. So first things first, and here I use a, a decent size, so let's just see, make it about, so if we press tab, make this 5 meters, and then make this, and then tab again, make this 20 meters for now. Okay, we're not sure how big this is going to be, but my guess this will work. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of the layer. That, that first image came on. Okay, so you need to, before you start, have no layers here. So the first thing we do is going to go to materials and we're going to create a new material. Okay, while we you can give this a name, you can call this floor plan or plan. Then you're going to find the texture, so you're going to apply this texture. So here I've gone straight to the folder, I'm going to open this up and you can see now the next thing you need to do is just increase the scale and make sure that these proportions are locked. You can unlock those, but make sure that they're locked so it maintains its uh, aspect ratio. Now I'm simply going to type in 10,000. Good. Press OK. Now with this material selected, I'm going to paint the face of the surface. Okay, now you can see I've got the material applied to the face of this face. Okay. Now I'm going to simply just increase the size of this so that it incorporates the whole image that I need to see. While you're moving this, you can use the shift key to lock it on an axis. Okay. I'm happy with this result. So maybe I want to, I want to trim some of this information away. So grab some of that. I'm going to move this back as well, just so that I've got the floor plan in view. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is switch on orthographic view and I'm going to go to my top view. Okay. I want to move this information to the right location around your X and Y. So remember, in format, the green axis, the positive green axis will be north. So we'll need to rotate this image. So select the image, double click, select the whole tab, tab until you select everything. And you're going to say rotate, you're going to rotate this by 180 degrees. Good. The last thing we need to do is now mirror this information. So we need to mirror this information. And I'm going to move it to this axis over here and I'm going to rotate this in this direction. Okay, I can simply delete. I can simply delete this information. Okay, now the last step that we need to do is we need to make this 
a group. Okay, now that this is a group, you can see our north's in the right location. Okay. Ah, this is still in the incorrect. My, my apologies. Let's mirror this once more. And let's change the axis. Okay, so that was the correct orientation. And I'm going to move this to the origin. Before we move to the origin, I just want to scale this to the correct scale. So I'm going to use a line tool. And I can simply draw a line five meters. Okay, so here's my line tool. So I need to scale this image. So I need to select this group. This happens from time to time. I've noticed with these groups, so I move this a bit. If you just move it once, it, it addresses that issue. It's just something I've picked up with um, Format from time to time. It does have this little weird glitch about it. Okay, so let's move this over here. Okay, fantastic. With the group selected, right click, and I'm gonna use a scale command. I'm gonna move this to the endpoint over here, and I'm gonna drag this. So along this axis, now I'm gonna drag this in line with where I want this thing to start. So that's as accurate as I'm gonna get it. Now I can simply grab this triangle and I can stretch this to where it meets the endpoint. So let's just stretch this. It should snap to the end of this line. Apologies. Scale. Move this. Move that. To zoom in a bit. We go and now we can scale it. Okay, there's the midpoint and there's the end point of the line. There we go. Fantastic. Now you can see it's the same length as that line. Okay, we can do another check. We can use the measure tool. Just very quickly. There we go, five meters. Okay, fantastic. Okay, now that I've got this image to the correct scale, I'm going to make a layer. I'm going to call this layer images. Good. Okay, now with this layer selected, I'm going to move this point to my origin. Good. Okay, so now I've placed this image, and the last thing you need to do is just make sure that I assign it to the layer. It just means while we're working with this image, I've got full control of switching this on and off as I need to. If you're trying to use your 3D view um, in orthographic view, just remember to switch it back to perspective to fix the view problems. So it just resets the camera in essence so you see the, the view properly. Okay, you can just keep working in this, in this view. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now that we're looking down again, I am going to bring in one more image. I'm going to create another rectangle. I just want to use another image so that I've got a height reference, for instance. Okay, so again, like we did, get a material, add, I'm just going to call this elevation. Elevation, I'm going to go and sneak um, that image for now, press OK. Again, play the size, let's make it by 5 meters roughly. Good. Press OK. Then I'm going to grab this material and apply it to this. OK. Good. Now I can just simply use these edges again, lock it on the axis. Now I just want to scale, I only want this portion of the elevation. OK. What I can do is adjust this so that it meets just the bottom of that floor. So I know when I put this on my elevation, that will work well. So I can line the bottom of that elevation best as I can. Okay, good. All right, so there's my, I'm gonna make this a group. And I'm gonna put that on the correct layers images. Okay, so go to layers and put that on images as well. Okay, good. Now, I just need to align this with that facade. So I know that that image will work with this facade over here. Okay. 
Now, before I continue, the next thing I need to do is I need to start setting up some construction lines. So let's start a new layer. So not materials, layer. Create another construction layer. Okay. Now, I'm going to use some line work. So from, maybe from there to there, right-click Make Group. So I'm going to make this a group. Now, I'm going to move this back a fraction. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this, this line. Before we continue, make sure that it's on the layer construction. You can lock the images layer for the time being, so you don't accidentally move it by accident. Just move that back into location. Okay, now I can, with the selected, I can go and rotate. So let's rotate this. I'm going to move this around the center. And now I'm going to rotate this 15 degrees. Okay, I went to pre-measure this and it was 15 degrees. Okay, so there's my first construction line. Okay, I'm going to use the rotate command again, rotate. And I'm going to select this point anywhere, and I'm going to rotate by 90. Okay, so I'm going to and hold Control down, so it makes a copy. And I'm going to say 90. So all it's done now, it's made two copies of this construction line for me. And now I'm going to move this. So let's grab this point over here, this endpoint. I'm going to move it to my origin. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to move this to my origin. Okay, good. So all I've got now in essence is I've got a construction line, a series of construction lines now that I can use while creating the shape. Okay, so this is quite handy. And what's neat is at any point I can switch my construction lines on and off. Okay, so in SketchUp it works slightly differently. You actually get a construction line tool. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these lines and now I'm gonna start setting this information out. Now you can see if I'm trying to work now, it's quite hard to work with. You can use the shift command and try and move things parallel. It's a bit tricky, okay? So what you're gonna do is right click anywhere in the view and you're gonna reset your axis for the time being. So this is gonna be like your working axis in this, at this point in time. And I'm gonna align my axis now with, with that angle. Okay, now I can work a lot better. So if I grab this construction line, and while the move command's active, we press control, it will duplicate it. So here I want to put these lines in the correct location. So you can see I'm going to make this 4050. Okay, that looks like the most accurate because there's a cladding on the exterior of this, so that looks the most accurate to me. Okay, so fantastic. I've got a construction line there, there, and there. Now I want to create another construction line, maybe vertically, just so I can capture the height. Okay, this image I'll use later on, but for now, let's just get it into the right location. So now I'm going to move this image. So move the corner. I'm going to move this over here. Now I'm going to grab this image and I'm going to rotate this image. You can see now it's done that weird, um, it's left. If I just move it again, it resets it. It's the strangest thing. It's just a little glitch that I've seen. That's just a little glitch that I've picked up in in the software itself, which is strange. Okay, rotate. Now I'm going to go and rotate this, and I just want to line this up with my current axis. So what's nice is because I've got the axis running, so I'm going to line it with my axis in that direction. Then I'm going to change this in this direction, grab this grip and put it over here, and then I'm going to rotate this up by 90, grab the arrows, Okay, good. Rotate. Uh, axis in this direction. Good. Grab this point, put it in line with that, and I'm going to grab this. I'm going to say 90. Good. Then I'll rotate it one last time. Rotate. Now I'm going to move the origin to the corner. And here I'm just going to rotate this by you can lock it on the green axis. Okay, great. Now I've got this, this image in place. So all I need to do now is try and scale this thing. So let's move that line from there. Okay, let's move this. Okay, 
I'm going to move that in line with this line over here. There we go. Okay, now I just want to scale this object. So scale. So I want to scale it so that there was a, a point there for me to use. And here, so here we just want to do this as this is just purely guesswork for now. Okay, I'm going to stretch this up and then I'm going to move this. Sorry, grab this point. Grab the image. Sorry. Scale. This is a bit finicky. I've got that point there. So move in. I want to scale it from there. Good. And then grab this arrow and then scale it. Okay. That's good enough for now. I'm putting this in the right location just so it'll help. This will help me later on when I start generating my roof. Okay. All right. So I've got that in the right location. I can lock the images again so I don't accidentally move everything. The next thing I want to do is go and set up my construction lines very quickly. So I'm going to grab this construction line. I'm going to use control. I'm going to copy it in this direction. So I'm going to see, lock it on the x axis now so you can lock it on. So here you can see you can get it quite accurate. So let's make that 6400. Yeah, 6400, 6400. You can use the tab key if you want to. Okay, this line I can move now and I can lock it on the green axis. I want to move this over here because technically it looks like this all lines up in one. Grab this again, control. Again, that looks like it's 6200, 6200. Remember, you can use tab as well or you can start typing the amount. Grab this line over here, copy this down. This looks like if I go in the green axis, uh, five, five, one hundred looks good to me. This maybe make it five, two hundred, five, two hundred. That's fine for now. Okay, here we've got some line work, so I'm going to grab this back. Pull this in this direction, but it looks like that corner is six hundred. Grab it again, control, drag it. So this line over here seems like 1,400 maybe. That will work perfectly. Fantastic. Okay, so now that's really starting to work well. Okay, what I can do is reset the work plane. So I can grab one of these and then move it in this direction. So maybe let's start at this point over here. So let's put this down over here, right click and rotate. Rotate, so here I'm just going to rotate this line. So from there, and I'm going to rotate it until it snaps in line with the red axis. Good, and I'm going to move this line over here. We'll sort that out in a minute. So let's just grab this, rotate again, rotate. Here I'm going to use this command and control, so I've got a duplicate. I'm now going to grab the end point of this line, and I'm going to move it where this intersection happens. So I'm going to lock it along this axis and I'm going to lock it on this object over there. So that's the exact intersection. Okay, remember I used the tab key to lock it on the on the axis that I wanted to, to lock to. That is tricky sometimes to get used to. Okay, now the next tool is I'm going to show you how to use the measure tool. So the measure tool is quite handy. So I'm going to say measure from this point over here. And here you can lock it on the green axis and you can snap it to this object. When you hold over this object, you can now edit this, this command over here. Okay, so I can change that. So if I press tab and I change that to 4050, you can see that was almost spot on and it moved the line. Okay, so you can use the measure tool to move objects. So this one, grab, here I'm going to create a duplicate and you can see to this point over here, 5500. Great. Okay, good. Now I've got all my construction lines that I need in place. Okay, so this is really working well. Uh, oh, I forgot to. So here we have a problem. So here I can just copy it, but I can use the measure tool to get this correct. So the measure tool. So remember, you can use the measure tool and then select this line, and here you can go 6200. Okay, there we go. Good. So now I've got all these construction lines. Fantastic. So now I can use these construction lines to start building my mass. So I can literally start drafting or drawing over this to create my shape. Okay, so let's maybe have a look at that. So here I'm going to use my line tool. So I've got a point in which I can snap over here, my origin. 
Now if I use the shift key, you see that it'll snap. Shift key, you see it snaps, and I can snap to this point. Shift key. So shift key over this line, snap. And here I can come and draw to this point over here. So again, lock it on this point to this point over here. Now lock it on this axis. You can see now it locks in the green axis, for example. So you can see in no time, I can start drafting and drawing. So here, snap, lock it on this axis, put this over there, lock it on this axis, take it to there, and now I'm going to simply finish creating my shape. Now, I technically have a shape on a shape, so you might want to switch off all this information for the time being, so you can see, ah, I didn't finish this line off, so line. Good. Now I've got a shape. Okay. I can switch on my construction lines to make sure that it's finished at the right point, but you can see everything has worked out really well. Okay, now I can simply bring my images back. Good. Now I can use this face, and I can pull this face up to match. So here, if you lock it on the blue axis, I can try and put it, so you can see 3600. So I can see close 3600. I'm going to extrude this 3600. Good. Actually, I don't need that image anymore. This image has served its purpose, and I can simply delete it now. Okay? Fantastic. You can leave it there to try and guess the window, maybe. So maybe we'll leave that there, but it looks like if you follow the same width. So I'm going to use the reference images outside of my project. So when you don't need information, okay, good. The next thing I am going to do before I continue is I'm going to move everything up. I'm going to select everything up. I'm going to move everything up by 150 because technically there will be a slab that this will all set on. And you can see from the origin, I want to just offset that by 150 so that I can start working quite accurately. Now, I've got the basics in play now. I've got the shapes that create everything, make this a group. Okay, so we can start calling. We can start working on this. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm just going to call this hide for now. Just means that this layer is what I can use to hide stuff on, and it's just where I'm going to create my mass. Okay, so I'm going to use this layer to create my mass. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now is just start building the roof and the form. So here we're going to go and have a look at the roof. So let's just get a bit a bit of clear or a better understanding on how the roof pitch works. Look, this is a bit of guesswork. You know, we don't actually have the actual model in front of us, so. But you can see that the roof slopes in this direction and it slopes in that direction. So let's assume that that's our ridge line over here. Okay, so you can we can safely assume that this is our ridge line from here to there. So our ridge line is this line over here. Okay, so how would we go and build that ridge line quickly? Now, if you go to settings, what you can do is you can use this tool so it hides the rest of the information in the model so that when you're working on certain objects, your drawing views are not polluted. Okay. One thing I'd recommend you do is upgrade the axis for this group. Just so it means every time you use this group, that the axis is in a good location. That's important if you're working with groups. Okay. Fantastic. So now that we've got that in the right place, the next thing is I'm going to create a, inside the group, I'm going to create a rectangle. Quite large. Okay. And what I'm going to do with this rectangle, and at this point as well, we can also start switching on. So let's just explain how this works. I'm going to switch on hidden objects so I can start seeing in the geometry and see if there's any hidden objects just in case I need to delete things. Okay. And I might start showing identifying back faces. Okay, identifying back faces it just means sometimes that we've got to flip a face, but that's something that we can switch on and off if we need to, and I'll explain that later on. Okay, so just assume that our roof pitch will be 10 degrees. Um, I've done this in the past, and it was about 10 degrees. So here I'm going to move this, and I'm going to orientate my tool in this direction and grab this point over here, and just, just assume that this roof goes down by 10 degrees. Sorry, this tool is a bit frustrating to use at times. Okay, grab this point and put this over here, and grab this arrow, and I'm going to type down minus 10. Good. So that's minus 10 degrees. Now you notice when the view starts to look funny, what I also do as well is I switch off the work plane. 
So I don't see the work plane and I also switch off the grid. So you can switch the grid off at this point. Okay, so at least now you've got a clean view. So you're not limited. You can work underneath the model and above the model. Okay, it is important to switch those on at times, but you don't necessarily have to have them on all the time. Okay, select this information. I'm now going to mirror this this object and I'm going to mirror it around the. So what, what I'll do now is to create a single shape. Then I'm going to make this a group. Now I'm going to move this object and I'm going to put it on this point over here. Okay, this has done this weird thing again. This is the weirdest thing. So if I move it again, it will reset itself. It's very strange. I don't understand why it's doing that. It's just a glitch that I've picked up of late. So let's just move this information, move, or oh, undo. Uh, let's just grab the object, go over here, and I'm going to move this to there. Right click on this, and I'm going to go rotate. I'm going to move this to this point over here. I'm going to grab this point and put it over here. And then I'm going to rotate this in line with that. So in theory, my roof pitch does that. Okay. Now I've just got to move this roof along this line. So this is where you can start using your snap keys. You can see I can snap it along that purple. So I'm going to move it and just put it in this position over here. Okay, so in essence, you can see that my roof will cut these objects. Okay, the next, the last thing we've got to do is explode this object. So explode it. Here you can um, ungroup all objects. You can ungroup just this object. You can make this object unique because it means if you edit it again, it won't affect the, the parent or the original version. Or you can go and edit group. Okay, but in this instance, I'm going to explode. And what you'll notice it would have done is it would have made this all part of each other. And you can see that where it's cut the intersecting lines, for example. So now I can start deleting these edges and vertices. Okay. So here you can see I can start getting rid of the geometry that I no longer need. Okay. And what's neat is I've got a mass model of my... So here I'm just selecting all these vertices and I'm deleting them. Okay. What's nice about deleting the vertices it actually deletes all the unnecessary geometry right away without having to select all the edges, etc. So now we've got the basic mass in place of our model, which is fantastic. So now if I go to layers, for example, I'm going to go to images and I'm going to switch off that part of the images. Oh yeah, what I need to do is I need to array this by, so let's just go to top view. Okay, I'm going to change my axis a bit. So right click, move my axis. I'm going to line my axis up with this red line over here. This is provided it just meets with that. Okay, just want this to be in the right location. Go to top view. Top view. I'm going to grab this axis and I'm going to move it in this direction along the green axis by one meter. Okay, so lock it on the green axis. Tab 1000. Good. Okay, it's just where these these end. You'll see that this is the driveway now. Okay, so now what I might do is I can duplicate. So let's just duplicate. Let's create a new layer. I'm going to call this mass because so I might want to keep this mass object. This one I'm going to add it to my mass layer and I'm going to copy this. So edit, copy, You can copy this object. So let's just say edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Now that one I'm going to change to hide and I'm going to switch off the hidden one for now. So now that I've got my mass in place, this is a mass object. I'm going to switch that off for now. So I'm going to keep working. So this is my mass complete. Now I'm going to continue working on the hide option because now I can cut out more of the information that I need and I can start generating. Okay, so I can start generating the information now for the plan. So you can remember, I've got to, let's bring back the images again. So let's just see, I've got one more line to create. So let's just switch off both of those. Go to top view. Okay, and I just need to create one more of these. So let's copy that and that will work. Okay, so here I'll just have to grab its endpoint. So let's grab the endpoint of it. So it will snap perfectly. There should be another endpoint there. Good. So it's giving me that line work underneath. Switch off images. 
bring back my hard object. So with this hard object, let's make sure in settings that we now I'm going to grab this line work off this hidden object and I'm going to duplicate it. So control lock it on this axis, snap it to that. Good. Now I'm going to create some line work. So create some line work line. And I'm going to lock it down this line. I'm going to pull it to here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this information through my model. So now I'm starting to build the mass, but I've got that other model to help me generate what's going on here. Now I'm going to cut out some of the additional information that I don't need. Okay, so I've got a line over here. And I'm going to duplicate this in this direction by 200 because there was a wall there, for example. Now I'm going to draw some line work underneath here. So remember, we're working in this model. So line work, that's going to come. So here, uh, snap on this line over here. I'm going to start in line with this object. So there, I'm going to come down until this point over here. Then I'm going to go along this object up until there. And then I'm going to cut back to there. I'm going to grab this bit of line work in line with this object. I'm going to snap it to there. Okay, so what that would have done, let's switch off construction quickly. You can see now in my model, it's given me some line work to work with. I just need to close these up. So just draw one bit of line work in this direction, snap it on there, and just go to there. Now, what's neat is I can delete that, delete that. Here we might have some small vertices. If you delete those, you'll notice that these shapes will become, okay, but it's fine. And I'm just going to start extruding this information roughly for now, because there will be a flaw in here. I'm just starting to get the basic forms in place. Okay. Right. And I can make, I can do some guesswork. There's going to be a door there. Okay. So here I've got the basic form of my building starting to emerge. We're going to put some floors in later on. They'll use the construction lines again. Okay. So typically, from here, so let's just use a measuring tool. I'm just going to guess this. This is just basic knowledge that you'll gather from being on site a bit. So let's just go to there, select this face and that. Press tab. We're going to make that to 200. Good. So typically, this might be a threshold. So maybe let's make it to 400 for now. I think 2400 will work well. Okay, good. So now we've got the basic form of our building starting to come together. Okay. Yeah, so this is starting to work well. Now all that we need to do is we'll probably need to create a a shape that runs along. So like a beam structure that runs along here. So this is where I can use my other mass tool. Okay, so that's good. So let's bring this mass back. Uh, I've made a big mistake here. So what I should have done, this should have all been, so let me explain how to do this. So here I'm going to make this unique, make unique, so that this block and that other block are no longer the same block. Okay, so let me explain. So let's just switch that hard off and I'm going to switch my mask back on. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove some of this geometry and fix what I've done. So that's, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Let's just fix this quickly. Sorry, that was my mistake. Line, let's pull that back to there. Okay, now we can delete that vertex, delete that vertex. Okay, that's all fixed now. Okay, all that I need to do now is draw a line. So draw a line. If I draw a line and I shift, and now I can, you'll see that it'll go back to that facade. Now I can draw a line down, lock it on the blue axis, come back to here. Good. Okay, this won't work as well because they're different facades. Again, so line, draw a line. Now you can lock it on that axis to there. So lock it on the green axis to there. Draw a line, lock it on this axis. We'll go back to there. Good. I should not have done that. That's very fascinating. That should not have done that. So let's draw a line from there to there. So 
So this I should have maintained as my mass. So that was my my mistake. Let's just get rid of that. So now I can draw a line from there to there to there. Okay, there it's fixed it. Perfect. Okay. All right, so we'll be back to square one. So we're going to have two masses. Okay, I'm just going to close this hole quickly and draw one more line down here. Line. So that's just a heads up. You need to make. Okay, this should be working. Why don't this? Why doesn't this one close? So now this is where the problems start. Something is not good here. You should not be at diagonal here. That's very interesting. So this should be closed. Let's see if that will disappear now. Yeah, there we go. Good. So there was just a double line somewhere. We can get rid of that for now. We can get rid of uh, that was why I was doing that. So get rid of that line. Good. Good. Okay, now we're back to our original. I need to use this to create my beams because here you can see I need to create some beams along here. So let's just switch this back on. And I want to make sure that that's on the mass layer. Okay. So I might switch this. This is going to be hide or my form. I can actually switch these off. This is more of a construction layer now, technically. But yeah, you just need another layer. It doesn't matter as long as you have a layer to control the stuff a bit better. Okay. All right, so the last thing I want to do now, switch on my construction layers again. And here I'm just going to use this line. I'm going to create a line along this face from that point going up, and I'm going to snap it onto there. Voila. So I've got my first bit of line work over there. <clears throat> okay, all I need to do now is work on this face. So what you can do now is right click and you can change your work plane now. So pick your work plane to work in line with this face. Okay, now I can draw a bit of line work over here. I'm going to grab this bit of line work. And here, I need to move this down. So let's move this down. Now you can't work. This is where things get tricky because technically you want to offset this by a certain amount. So what you can do is you can maybe select the line and say offset. That's not going to work well. You need to offset this line. So I'm going to grab one more of these bits of line where grab it, grab it, control it, and then drag it down. So grab it, control it, just drag it down anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to use my, so I can switch off this now and I can switch up construction. I just want to work with this bit of line work. I can use my measure tool for now, measure. So from there, now you'll see that it'll try and snap in line with this bit of line work. There we go. That I want it to be 225. Okay. That's going to try and neaten this stuff up for me. That's fine. I'm just going to create another bit of line work down. Let's pull this down. I'm just going to create a face for now. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Make this a group. Now I can switch my mask back on and maybe my construction lines. Okay. So. Let's move this there, and I can move this back. So let's move this object. Let's done that weird thing again. Select that object, move it. There, it's reset. Let's just move this from there. Let's move this endpoint. So and say, move that to there, and I'm going to move that back along this face. Here, I can lock it. Let's move that back 1,000. Uh, let's, let's do it in this direction. 1,000. And I can move it up. Lock it on this axis, blue axis, good. Now all I need to do is go into the shape. Activate the shape, grab, grab this. Sorry, my apologies, grab that edge. I'm going to move that edge up into this point over here. 
voila. Then I'm just simply going to extrude this. Uh, let's make it 50 mil. Good. And now that this is a block, that's fine. I'm going to grab this object as a group. I'm going to move this down because you would have noticed that this was embedded. Let's move it down by another 50 mil. Good. Good. Now I'm going to move this object in here. Now I'm going to move my axis to be in line. So let's grab my axis. I'm going to move my axis over here. I'm going to do it in this direction. Good. Now this object I'm going to move. Go to top view. Top view. I'm going to move this object so it starts here. Now you can pick the red axis so it's going to be in this object. That's fine. I'm going to snap it to there. Now I'm going to array this object. I'm going to array this along this edge. So technically, this is going to array along this edge. Okay, so I'm going to say right click. I'm going to use the array command for this. Right click. I'm going to use the array command. Copies. I think they were, if we go to the images, they are, let's go to top view. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, okay. I'm gonna go nine objects. Okay, I'm gonna pick from there. Now, technically, you want to make an offset of 50 here. So maybe what I should have done was made an offset. I should maybe mark an offset here where this is supposed to end. Okay, because at the moment it's going from face to face. So that's not quite correct. But for now, I'm just going to kind of guess this because... Good. I can come back and do that later on. But for now, if I switch this off and I go back to this view... You can see now that I've created the very the beginnings of this array. Okay, and you can see it's working really well. Okay, but we can come back and fine tune that information as as we need. Okay, fantastic. Okay, for this is step one, just to try to get these masses in place. I'm going to go and add a lot more information on, but for now, I'm just getting the basics in place. In the next video, I'm going to add a lot more detail.